It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. The show where Schadenfreude is a dish best served cold. As the morning papers blared the news, some were stunned. Shit, shit, shit. I see. I am your host, Stimulator, and for the past week or so, one thing's been dominating the headlines. Brexit. 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 Yep. On June 23rd, peeps in Britain voted in a national referendum to leave the EU. We're out. Plunging both the UK and Europe into a deep existential crisis. And like, our future's kind of been taken away. And as political commentators, journalists, bloggers, and pundits of all stripes endlessly pontificate on the causes and possible consequences of the looming Brexit, the only thing that peeps seem to be able to agree on is that it's a fucking game changer and that the future is more uncertain than it has been in a long fucking time. As soon as the first poll results started coming in, the British pound went into motherfucking freefall, dropping to its lowest rate in over 30 fucking years. London's infamous financial district, the so-called City of London, also took a proper pounding, posting the biggest losses since the 2007-2008 financial crisis. All around the world, stock markets are experiencing sporadic aftershocks, as ever opportunistic investors shift vast sums of money around the world in a ruthless effort to profit off the crisis. Politicians in Scotland and Northern Ireland have already called for their own referendums, raising the specter of the breakup of the UK itself. Some people hate the English, I don't. They're just wankers. We, on the other hand, are colonized by wankers. The morning after the Brexit vote, Britain's posh, pick fucking PM David Cameron, who initially proposed a referendum in a fascinating bargain to maintain his position atop the Conservative Party's pecking order, acknowledged in the most eloquent, face saving way that he could muster that he had shit the bed and had no intentions of sticking around to watch the help clean it up. I will do everything I can as Prime Minister to steady the ship over the coming weeks and months, but I do not think it would be right for me to try to be the captain that steers our country to its next destination. <sighs> just breathe it in. Let's just take this in together, shall we? A political legacy in tatters. The Prime Minister who, who took us out of Europe. Bye-bye! I don't have anything too high. He was a frat boy, a glorified frat boy. He stuck his penis in the head of a dead pig. David Cameron, pig fuck. Maybe we should kiss just to break the tension. Oh, while well, it's a rare treat to watch David Cameron rewarded for his arrogant, tone-deaf hubris with an early fucking retirement, that doesn't mean that things are necessarily going to be better off once he's gone. Mixed in with the British voters' righteous anger at the austerity-pushing bankers and the faceless technocrats in Brussels has been a terrifying rise in right-wing nationalism, racism, and xenophobia. Despite England's role as the literal fucking flag bearer of centuries of colonialism and global imperialist domination, one of the main issues during the referendum campaign was fears over immigration with the Eurosceptic party UKIP, headed by Britain's creepy racist uncle Nigel Farage and former mayor of London and petulant manchild Boris Johnson leading the fascistic charge. Since the Brexit vote attacks against Eastern Europeans, ethnic minorities and people perceived to be Muslims has spiked sharply, with over 90 hate crimes reported over the following three days, ranging from threatening notices and graffiti to arsons and vicious assaults. While these tensions have been building for some time now, far-right groups are clearly on the march and have only been emboldened by recent events. On June 24th, around 2,000 people, including a sizable crew of Antifa, took to the streets of London to demonstrate the support for migrants and vent their rage at the right-wing tabloids that have been steadily churning out sensationalist headlines and whipping up racist nationalist sentiment for months on end. Despite all the uncertainty currently gripping the UK, one thing is clear. The time has come for bold militant actions and sustained anti-racist, pro-immigrant organizing in working class neighborhoods across the UK and beyond. Because make no mistake, while Britain is the first major country to ditch the EU, they almost certainly won't be the last. With far-right politicians in France and the Netherlands already calling for their own national referendums, the disintegration of the European project may come sooner than people think. If the motherfucking resistance doesn't rise to this challenge, then we are in for some seriously dark fucking times. Shattered images, broken 
Jones is the catalyst Stand equipped, take care to sow the seeds Who grow the trees, fighting a knowledge youth Drowned in their courage, wait to fill when their bosses